and before we get to the questions, I want to start off with with you, Michaela. Um, it's been you know you've been calling out the world champions for a very very long time, and so can you talk about the emotions of sort of waiting for that shot, waiting for somebody to give you that shot, and then when you heard that the WBO in an unprecedented move in in, in female boxing made you uh, the mandatory challenger for this title. Can you talk about sort of the, the range of emotions you felt sort of waiting for this title shot and then how you felt when you finally heard that, yes, uh, somebody was mandated to fight you for a fight you for a title? Yeah, so uh, I have been calling out the champs for a while. It's been something that I feel like I've been ready for for a few fights. But um, now in hindsight, looking back, I think everything really just worked out perfectly. Um, like Bob Aram said, I've had some really great fights and I've really been able to sort of settle into my pro style and I'm ready, more ready than ever to take on these world champions and I feel like I'm the best in this division. I've had 13 fights to really gain that experience and so even though we didn't get it a few fights ago, it really was kind of sweet when the WBO announced me mandatory. Um, it was right after Eddie Hearn had signed Awa Brodnika. Um, he has the WBC champ and Terry Harper as well, and now he has uh, Mava Hamadou, she's the other champion in this division. So he was definitely trying to uh, rally up the champs in this weight class, um, keep the belts in the matchroom stable, but um, I've been number one contender in this division for a while, so I'm the rightful challenger, and now we're going to get one of these belts back to America. Thank you, Mikhail. And I think I heard a dog in the background. Is that Luna in the background, or is that the other one? I'm not, sh I'm not sure. Luna, let's hope that was the only bar because sometimes they're so fit. But maybe they're the, the stars of your Instagram channel, Michaela. So uh, <laughs> before we, so we we will get to the first question for Michaela. And uh, as a heads up, again, the raise hand button uh, on the Zoom or just uh, shoot me a uh, shoot me a uh, message on the chat. And I was told it's Luna and Moose. I apologize to Moose for for that oversight. Um, our <laughs> first question comes from Jake Donovan from Boxing Scene. Jake, when you're ready, please go ahead. Thanks, Evan. Appreciate it. Hey, Michaela. Hey. Um, first, yeah, congratulations on getting this fight. I know it's been a long time coming. Like you said, you've been calling out all the champions for a very long time. How long specifically has Brodnika been on your radar? Um, Brodnika has... So, I don't even want to say that one specifically has been on my radar because I know that we are going after... It was tricky. We are going after uh, Ava Wallstrom, who is the WBC okay. champ. And... Um, this was about a year ago. We were in negotiations and I woke up one day and the fight went to Terry Harper. So Terry Harper beat Ava Wallstrom, which I, uh, assumed that she would. I didn't never really thought that Ava was all that great. And so now Terry Harper has the belt. And so I kind of came at her for a little while saying, you know, that I was number, number one contender. That should have been my world title fight. Um, she ranked number 13 and she kind of skipped the line there, but you know, this is boxing. That's how things work out. So, um, my radar was sort of, sort of directed towards her, but then when the WBO made it mandatory and we realized that, okay, let's start going after the other champs. And I started looking in Ava Bradnika's way, but I was, I was ready to fight anyone with a belt. Very cool. And I got one more question for you. But, Bob, I did want to ask you, after um, Michaela mentioned that uh, she was mad when Wallstrom won the fight in Terry Harper, she gave you the mandate that the next fight had to be a title fight. How soon did you get to work on making that happen? Well, you know, when Michaela gives the order, we step <laughs> with attention and try to get it done. I mean, um, we're very proud of Michaela. She's comported herself tremendously, both in and out of the ring, and she's going to be a great world champion and a great credit uh, to women's boxing. Yeah, thanks. And then, Michaela, my final question for you, uh, not just getting this title shot, what does it mean that it's coming on a card of this magnitude? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I am honored that Top Rank has really moved me in the way that they have and it's not just me but like believed in women's boxing and I think that they've moved me perfectly I think they've put me on some amazing cards um and it's just given me the platform that I wanted the platform that women's boxing needed and I've they I always felt like a duty to I know they signed to me they signed me they obviously believed in me but I always felt a duty to still prove to them that they made the best decision like they signed the best female they possibly could, and I wanted to live up to to their expectations and their their hopes for me. So um, 
this is a big card, co-main event. It's big for women's boxing as well, and it's great. It's going. It's only going up from here. Some big things for the sport. Thank you so much, Jake. And our next uh, next question comes from Fight Hype's Sean Zatel. Sean, please go ahead when ready. Hey, Michaela. Thanks for the time today. Um, you said recently that you know Coach Al and them are are training you like you're fighting up against a god. But you said you don't feel that she's on your level. Uh, Iwa is, and why do you feel that way, Michaela? That she's not on your level. Um, you know, I've seen her fight, and it's not really about her about me and where I where I am in my career and how much I've developed over the last couple of years and even just this year like this pandemic I've only had two fights but we've been in training camp for four I've been training back to back to back non-stop you know 13 pro fights in three years um, I've been working hard and I'm peaking as an athlete like I'm really coming into my own and so it's really not about Ava Awa it's a it's really about me um, they always train me like I'm going up against someone amazing. And I always have to be like, you guys, don't worry. Just relax. Like, I got this. I got this. But that's what good coaches do. You know, they, they're looking at everything Iwa Rodnika does really, really well. And then they're acting as if she does it even better than what, how she actually does it. So um, they're preparing me for a, a really strong, sharp version of Iwa Rodnika. And then, like I said, in return, that is making me the sharpest, most technical sound version of Michaela Mayer. So... Um, this is more just about my journey and where I feel like I am as an athlete, and I feel like I'm the best in this division. I just don't feel that anyone can beat me right now. She could do a few um, frustrating things in there. I'm sure, as you know, she gets on her bike sometimes, and then on the inside, she'll just clinch uh, quite a bit, you know. Um, how do you deal with, with those kind of tactics in this fight? Um, you're exactly right, and it, it can be That's what Coach Al sort of has been instilling in me in this whole camp. And, like, listen, I know that – you, you you are the better fighter, but that can be a frustrating style when someone's constantly moving or when someone's holding. So he's really prepared me for that. Um, it's not obviously when she's when she decides to get up on her bike and move. It's not about chasing her. It's about walking her down and staying behind the jab, which is he's big on. And then when she wants to come in there and hold, it's it's not le not letting her do that, keeping that space, working her body, and not letting her push me back, but stay grounded, hold my ground, and, and push her back. Thank you so much, Sean. And we go ahead to ESPN.com's Eric Woodyard. Eric, please go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Michaela? Hi. Yeah, pretty good. So I have a question. Obviously, when you step it up in title fights, you know, the mental focus and everything increases on this level. For you, you spoke about the pandemic and everything like that. How were you able to, you know, stay at your best throughout this time? Like you said, it's your second fight of 2020. Just the mental focus. How are you able to do that throughout the pandemic and be your best, as you say, you feel like at this time? I mean, it obviously was a little bit difficult, you know, everyone's worried about catching this virus and hey, it happened to me, you know, I did a whole camp and I go in there and I test positive for COVID, have to quarantine and restart the whole camp over again. So um, there was a little relief in this camp thinking like, okay, I already went through it, you know, hopefully, you know, I can't, it's a little, I think it's a little more difficult to catch it again. So there was a relief there, but I mean, this is this is what I love to do. And there wasn't, nothing was going to stop me from getting in the gym and being my best. Like I understand that gyms are closed and everybody needs to stay quarantined. But I mean, I set up the second this happened, I set up a gym in my backyard. And when I felt like that wasn't enough, I hopped in my car and drove across country to coach K to start training because I didn't want to go near coach Al since he's a little older. I didn't want to get him sick. Like I just do what I have to do to get it done. So there's really no excuse um, for this, the pandemic or anything that's going on, like, you know, you got to get it done. So, uh, I don't think it's made it any more difficult for me. It's just got to roll the punches. Thank you very much, Eric. And next we go to Matt from behind the gloves. You're unmuted. Please ask your question. And Matt, before you go again, a reminder, uh, raise hand button, private message, and you'll get to your question. Matt, go ahead. Hi, Michaela. And when you hear, Rodnick has said that you're slower than her with not so good legs. Do you believe that she's saying that to get in your head or that she just completely believes that? I think that's her just looking at my tape and trying to come up with something to say because she knows that I do everything better than her. Uh, it also shows me her IQ because if you look at my fights, I'm not slow. 
I'm not flat footed. I have great feet. And she may think that because she likes to hop and move around and jump around the ring, but you know, that's not necessarily good boxing. She's hopping around, jumping in circles, but she's not even punching when she's moving. So um, I think that, I don't think she believes anything that she's saying. I think that she's hyping up the fight and talking a big game, but I don't think she believes what she's saying. I think she knows I'm a better fighter. She knows I'm fast. She knows I'm strong. She knows I'm more technically sound, and she's just playing into the hype. You've also, you've said recently, your boxing skills over the last 10 months have improved, you know, so much. Um, can you give us a little bit of an insight onto what you think you've improved on, you know, in this period? Yeah, so, like I said, even though I've only had, this is only my second fight, like, I've had four camps back to back. And so, what happens when you have camps is you're constantly peaking yourself, right? Um, yeah. And so, I really just jump level, stop. Sorry. <laughs> that but we're always working on something new every camp you know my coaches don't want me to be complacent they don't want me to be a one-dimensional fighter and it takes time to do that transition from the amateurs to the pros so yeah i've been pro for three years but i'm still really settling into that style um my first half of my boxing of my pro career you guys saw me like working the body and a lot of people were like why isn't she using her height and reach why isn't she using her height and reach and that's because we were training to i already know how to use my height and reach Maybe mm -hmm. the people who watched me as a pro didn't know that because I wasn't doing that, but I already knew how to do that. Coach Allen, Coach K needed me to learn how to fight on the inside. So I was learning on the job and I was practicing. And then this last fight against Helen Joseph, we got back to boxing and moving. So now, because now people are going to see, okay, she wants to go and she wants to fight on the inside, but no, I can box and, and I can move too. And so now it's about putting both of those styles together and keeping them guessing. Cheers, Mikhail. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Matt. And uh, if I can ever, if I ever, if I can find her unmute button, we will, uh, we will get to Crystal Hart. Hold on one second, Crystal, you should be unmuted. Please go ahead when ready. Hold on, sorry about that, Crystal. You should be unmuted. All right. While we wait, well, while we wait for Crystal to unmute, Michaela. I mean. You haven't dealt with many hey, opponents who. Go. Oh, Crystal! I was. I got it. I, you're, I got it here. Okay. You're, you're, I saw you're, one you're of your. Gonna, Crystal, you're <laughs> going to make me filibuster there for a second. So, uh, go ahead and ready, Crystal. Thank you. I saw one of your tweets about you were so excited about the uh, Lomo Lopez fight and the right uppercut. Uh, could could you tell me then what happened afterwards when you went into the gym? How this um, <laughs> maybe invigorated you and your training. Yeah, so what's a little bit different with me, I think, is I live with my coaches for the entire camp. So I did the first nine weeks up at Coach Al's house. I live in his room downstairs. Like, we have breakfast together, dinner together. I mean, everything is boxing for two over two months, right? And then I come here to Colorado, and Coach K joins us, and we're just all under one roof. So I just don't escape it. Like, I wake up in the morning. I just want to have my coffee, and the first thing I hear about is what we're, like, listen, today, I really want you to work on this. Really, I want you to step over. I mean, we're doing step around drills in the kitchen, like in my pajamas in the morning. And so, um, of course, after that uh, Lopez fight, those nice uppercuts, and that's something that we've really been working on as well um, to catch people coming in is that nice, tight right uppercut. And it's it's a skill. It's, it's to learn how to do those uppercuts properly, especially if you've got someone like Coach Al who's a technician and wants everything done perfectly um it's been months and months of trying to perfect those uppercuts so when he saw lopez do it it was like that's how to, that's how you do it that's how you do it i'm like okay i got it i got it <laughs> okay. good hey and when you tested positive did you have any um symptoms or you, or you took the test and 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 so had it all my antibody test showed that I, well, my IgG was positive, which means I had come in contact with it months ago. So I don't really remember ever being sick. Um, I must have been asymptomatic, but it was still just lingering in my system. So it wasn't recent, and I couldn't really pinpoint, like, when I would have had it. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and we got a couple more minutes with Michaela, and then we will, uh, then we will go on to, to Jason Maloney. Uh, Gail, you were unmuted. Please go ahead when ready. Thank you very much. Good morning, Michaela. Your dogs have been making my dogs bark, so if we hear them all together, everybody, I'll, I'll just uh, <laughs> apologize up front. Um, I read that your um, 
favorite fighter who influenced you was Vernon Forrest, who of course Coach Al trained, um, who's you know been gone, gosh, more than a decade. I'm curious what uh, how that came about and what Coach Al's told him about you, yeah. and how on a third question, what living fighter do you most admire today? Okay, well, yes, uh, Vernon Forrest was not only like one of Coach Al's fighters, but I think it was someone, it really hurt him when Vernon passed, and because it was unexpected, he died young, and so I, I just learned this the other week, but the year Vernon died is the year I went up to Marquette and met with Coach Al, and so I've been hearing about him since the, the first week I had met him, and it hasn't stopped. It's been constant, 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 and so um, Coach, I was really proud of Vernon Forrest and what he did in his style and how he developed him. And he wanted to instill that in me because we're we're both similar. Our body types are very similar, right? So long, lean. Um, but the thing about Vernon is he was tall and he can use his reach, but he had he worked the body really, really well. And that's something that Coach Al's always wanted me to do and sort of emulate. So he put me in front of his fight and say, look how he gets the space, look how he uses his jab, but look how he shifts and goes to the body. And that's what you need to do. That's what's going to make you uh, multidimensional. People are going to be, if people are going to want to get you on the inside, but when they see you rip the body, they're going to be like, oh shoot. And then you have them right back out where you want them. So that was really important to him. And then just, I think overall, like, the, the character of Vernon Forrest, you know, and he, so he would just share stories with me and about their camps and he learned a lot. So he, he takes what he learned in those Vernon camps and tries to instill them in my camp. We do the exact same workouts, the exact same, the way he peeks me for a fight is exactly the same. And, and so, yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, it's good. And I like Vernon and I, from watching him over and over again, like I do, I love that style. I love that he can box and move. And I love how he digs to the body. So I just learned to sort of, he's just become my favorite fighter. Thank you very much, Gal. And we, uh, we will go to uh, one final question for, uh, for Michaela. And that comes from Cynthia Conte. Cynthia, you're unmuted. Please go ahead. Hi, Michaela. So I remember watching you, um, or actually following your tweet when uh, Harper and Jonas fought. One, what did you think of that fight and how did you see that outcome? And love the uh, Bob Aaron, you could also answer that. And would you also like to fight possibly Natasha Jonas, even though she's not about COVID? Um, Natasha Jonas fight and Terry Harper went pretty, very similar to how I expected. I did not expect Terry Harper to just completely dominate uh, Natasha Jonas. One, because Terry Harper's not that experienced, and Natasha Jonas is. I don't care. She's uh, Harper's 23, Natasha Jonas 36, but the Jonas has that experience that Harper does not have. And I've been saying that from the beginning. Um, Eddie Hearn got her that world title fight uh, at rank number 13, and she's not ready. She's going to get that fight, and she's not, she's not, she is not experienced enough to hold on to that belt. So um, I thought the score for that fight was fair. I do. I, I do believe that it was a fair draw. Um, I think that Natasha Jonas would have gotten the decision if she didn't let herself get backed into the ropes. But you can't go into a fight with a champ and be fighting with your back on the ropes like that gets you a draw not a win so i was happy with the decision um and i absolutely hope that after i get this belt from Rodnika that eddie hearn and, and harper will be willing to make this fight happen with me so we can unify the these belts but um because that's what they told me they said go get a belt michaela and then we'll talk about it so uh yeah bob Hold them to their word when it comes to that. And no, I really don't have any desire to fight Natasha Jonas. If she gets a rematch with Harper and gets the belt, then hell yeah, let's fight. But I want to unify this 130-pound division because there's girls at 135 that I'm ready to go and, and challenge myself against. Um, yeah, and other divisions after that. I want to be a multi-division world champion, so I want to unify this 130-pound division as fast as possible. And, uh, and Bob, about the unifications? Oh, you know, it, you know, we do a lot of business with Eddie Hearn. Uh, we uh, uh, let him use our fighters. We use his fighters. So I don't see any difficulty uh, in uh, making that match. I mean, uh, why not? Uh, 
Michaela wins the title uh, on Saturday, uh, she'll be, uh, I think, uh, the most prominent uh, woman in women's boxing. Uh, because thanks to ESPN, uh, they are behind her. And ESPN is now clearly, uh, without any question, the biggest platform for boxing. Uh, we saw what happened with the Lopez Lomachenko fight. Uh, over 3 million watched it on ESPN, and another million and a half uh, watched it on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. So when you do numbers like that, and Mikhail is part of the ESPN family, uh, we can, I'm sure, make matches with any of the other uh, champions in women boxing. Thank you, Bob. And Michaela, I want to let you go on, on this question because nobody asked it, but I'm dying to know. Um, your <laughs> opponent, uh, Bronica, has a habit of doing some interesting things at weigh-ins and, and wanting to shock people and uh, she she's kissed an opponent at one way and she's you know she's she's worn some interesting outfits and and, and she's sort of a, she's a show um she's a showman or show, uh, you know for lack of a better ter term um are you ready for any sort of head games that that might come at this uh, at this way all i know is that she is lucky there is a six foot distancing rule for now Okay, that's all I know. And if she wants to show up to the weigh-ins and half naked, I mean, we're all half naked, but you know, in her lingerie, then fine. So people are going to tune in just to see her looking like that. So fine. Tune in for that. I don't care what you tune in for. Just tune in. Um, I don't have a problem with what women decide to wear. Um, if that makes her feel confident and strong going into this fight, then she should wear that. I care about boxing. I care about how she, how she fights. So, um do what she wants going into the fight. Uh, it's, it's not gonna. Uh, it's, it's not gonna. It's not gonna help her out. Come Saturday night. <laughs>